hello welcome back to my channel hope y'all are having a fantastic day whenever you've decided to click on this here video i am having a pretty good day myself i won't lie no longer sick after being sick for about a week and a half over the past week as i've been on tiktok been on the internet trying to find some entertainment for myself i've been seeing everywhere fall decor now i want to buy fall decor even though it's the beginning of august so that's what i'm going to be doing today specifically i'm also going to be reading i'm also going to be i was going to say cooking i will be having food cooked for me that i will put in this video and, you know just typical typical weekly reading vlog shit i as you can tell i'm a little bit rusty i have not been in front of a camera in over seven days which you know shouldn't feel that weird but it is because i film pretty much every day of my life so i am going to go shopping halloween and fall shopping historically i have not been that big into like fall halloween decor as i age as i i was gonna say increasing have little to live for that's not true mostly i need things to get excited for i feel like in adulthood we don't have much to get excited for right because it's like we're working in the summer so summer vacation's not that exciting and fall decor is exciting to me at this juncture in my life so is uh christmas i've already been thinking about my next christmas tree but we're gonna pace ourselves and we're gonna look at halloween and fall decor today i'm also gonna go through my current inventory of fall and halloween decor just to kind of see what i have so i don't repurchase a lot of the same things or like a lot of things in one category right love pumpkins i don't need like a million pumpkins i think i only have like one storage tote of indoor like Halloween and fall decor so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down we can look at that together and then we can like go out on our little journey and then I'll give you a little haul when I come back I will at some point be reading what I will be reading I haven't entirely figured out yet I think it's gonna be some random shit so apologies in advance let's go ahead and, and get into it I'm gonna go ahead and pull that storage show down and we can kind of look at the current decor so that I can leave and go look at new decor also so I can go get lunch I'm so hungry pulled my decor tote for Halloween slash fall probably gonna use these words interchangeably but they're not obviously i actually have a lot more fall decor than i do halloween decor and halloween decor is definitely something that i want to get more of for this year <laughs> i have a couple of like haunted houses and you know like jack-o-lanterns for outside and stuff i mean haunted houses inside jack-o-lanterns outside but i feel like i don't really have that much in the way of halloween decor jess i think her handle is jess nevertheless i'll, I'll leave a link in the description has really cute halloween decor that she got i want to say it at home and i mean i'm definitely going there today but it really inspired me to have i guess more halloween decor for this coming season i'm gonna get, go ahead and give you a quick scan of this tote and we can kind of like go through some of the stuff okay so yes as you can tell this is like primarily pumpkins i also have some sort of like flameless candles that i like to put on my mantle i think i put these in between the haunted houses that i have in here i also have these pumpkins that my mom gave me last year i think she has gone for like a completely neutral <laughs> like fall decor in her home so she gave me these really big um multicolored pumpkins and at first i was like i don't know if i want these but i'm actually really glad that i have them because i have figured out that my fall decor sense is definitely like it leans neutral but i do like these kind of rusty colors because i do actually have some of these like in my everyday decor this i think goes upstairs in my office i do like to have um some decor in there since i do film in my office quite frequently I do have this big knit pumpkin i also have these pumpkins i think i got like these three or four pumpkins all together because again i was like really into the whole neutral thing and i really like these i think they're really cute and these could be left out like i would say like all fall season which i really like i would definitely keep these out around thanksgiving time my mom will always kept fall decor out through thanksgiving and then just switched everything out for christmas but yeah so as you can tell the majority of this is, is pumpkins mini pumpkins in here i used to put these in like a um, basket on my wall which are really cute but i need to figure out what i'm going to do with those this year these little mini pumpkins that i can decorate with i think i put these in my office last year as well i do have my haunted houses though those are like <laughs> my one actual uh, halloween decor plus this wooden pumpkin sign there's nothing on it there's no like no written words i'm not super into signs i guess you could say but it's just i don't know it's like a free standing piece of decor that i put in my kitchen typically these are obviously covered in cat hair but these are two little haunted houses that i got from pottery barn i cannot find these this season i don't know if it's just too early or what but absolutely adore these they had these in like three different sizes last time they're black metal i feel like they're gonna hold up pretty well you know over time if you're looking for something similar i know that grandin road has basically these with lighting in them they're not cheap but they are really really cute and they're the only ones that i found that are similar to this i looked on amazon and like other places and i couldn't find anything like this i'm wondering if it's just too early in the season but that is really the extent of my halloween decor i really don't have much in terms of spooky stuff kind of like i just mentioned i think part of the reason that i historically haven't had much halloween decor is because halloween seems like a very short season whereas fall kind of for me is from like august to the end of november so i can have you know just like a generic pumpkin out for a really long time but it seems weird i guess to have haunted houses out for longer but i, I don't give a fuck and honestly i do think that i'm gonna want to like switch things out even within the next couple of months that is one of my favorite things to do decor wise and i think i'm gonna start 
including more of that in my my vlogs is switching out little pieces of home decor like throw pillow covers i have a closet full of throw pillow covers <laughs> that i change out every couple of months because i get bored anyway i can see myself getting bored of just like regular fall decor and wanting some more halloween stuff so that's what we're gonna go on the hunt for today and i'll take you along with me in stores and kind of you know show you what i got uh, like i said eventually at some point we're gonna read but really need to just retitle these just like weekly vlogs because there will be reading but there's also gonna be a lot of like you know life stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and head out i'm gonna grab lunch and then we can go and explore and see what's out there i'm trying not to get my hopes up that there's going to be like an amazing selection of halloween decor there definitely wasn't last year in the stores that i visited but uh fingers crossed i can find good stuff i know at home for sure won't let me down so let's 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 head out So I am back from my little adventure. Hope you liked that time lapse. It's longer than I thought that it would be, but I did get some good footage in the three stores that I visited. I ended up going to Marshall's World Market and at home. I didn't make it to Kirkland's because it was kind of far away and I, I found good stuff where I was at. And I also thought about the fact that most stores right now don't really have the best sales for fall and holiday decor, fall and holiday, fall and Halloween decor. I kind of like perused things, got a feel for what's out there and I will probably purchase more in the future. I, I purchased some goodies, but I kept it simple. Excuse me? Hey. I ended up only buying things from Marshalls and at home. I feel like World Market, though I saw stuff online, you know, from other creators whose like local stores had gotten stuff, mine hadn't really gotten any fall stuff. So I kind of worked with what I got. As you can maybe see in the time lapse, I feel like Marshalls had a lot of fall stuff, not a whole lot of stuff that was like really geared towards Halloween, but I did pick up some goodies. So let me show you those real quick. The first thing that I got, something that I said that I wasn't going to get, <laughs> it's a sign. This one, it called to me, it's this little cat sign. I thought she was cute. And I felt like this would look really cute with like a pairing of, little like potion bottles. I was just thinking of how my mom decorated when I was growing up. My mom had kick-ass Halloween decor, probably because all of my family has like October birthdays, but she would have like a little like a little sign like this, a couple of like potion bottles, spooky cobwebs, things like that. So I thought this was cute. It was $9.99 and I don't know, she was cute. There's another sign that looked similar, but I liked this one because I had a cat, obviously. So like this a lot. This is the only like Halloween thing that I got from Marshalls. The other three are fall. I showed these in the time lapse, but I ended up getting this little garland. I just liked the idea idea of having this kind of strung from a fireplace. I thought that would be super cute. These are felted pumpkins and I liked the kind of neutral colors. I will say, okay, for fall decor, I like more rustic-y things, I would say, than I do typically year round, but I really, I liked this. I thought this was sweet. Uh, in terms of Halloween decor, I kind of like to toe the line between scary and cute. I don't like a lot of like gory stuff. I don't like a ton of like skeleton decor, but I do like it to not be like too cutesy. So anyway, these were really cute. These were $14.99. And then I also got these little candy corns. These are kind of 
on the cutesy side. I just liked them a lot and they were $12.99. So these little like, I think they're felted as well. Stuffed felted candy corns. These will probably go on the mantle and these will go like hung on the mantle. So <laughs> fun. I just can't deny myself a throw pillow. Throw pillows are my weakness and I did end up getting one that just felt, I don't know. It is like kind of grandma, but like in the best way. Whenever I think of fall decor, I don't want it to feel too modern. I want it to feel maybe a little bit, a little bit old fashioned if fall decor can be considered old fashioned. So I got this embroidered kind of linen feel pillow. One of the things that I'm kind of a stickler for when I buy pillows or buy pillow covers is that they need to feel expensive. I don't want something that's just like screen printed on. It needs to have some texture to it. It needs to feel woven and this one does and I just think it's cute. I like this green. I don't really have anything in this color family but I thought since it had these sort of like rusty colors it will look really pretty with a throw pillow I already have on my couch. I really like this. I also have a similar pillow that's just like singular pumpkin I wanted to say that I got from Target. Uh, so I'll either put both of these on my living room couch or I will put like this in my office and you know the one that I currently have on my couch but regardless I think this is pretty I thought long and hard about it and it felt like a necessary purchase okay so moving on to at home which is where I spent the majority of my time and money and Nugget's gonna be crinkling these bags I can just feel it so first up, let me show you kind of like the tabletop decor I got. They had so many large jack-o'-lanterns and fun things that I thought would be nice and like freestanding near a fireplace or something like that, but everything was full price and I didn't really want to spend $50 on a single pumpkin. That just wasn't really in the budget today. Uh, I did get a couple of like mildly spooky things that are cute. Okay, so first let me show you my collection of little potion jars, okay? I'm gonna pair these together on my mantle most likely. I have always fresh unicorn horn, scream syrup, and then my favorite one, which is spider juice. And I just thought, let me see if I can hold these all up. These would be cute, all kind of like collected together. Maybe next to this pumpkin skull that I just got. This one I think was like $14.99. I felt like that was a pretty good price. It's, I think, I don't know what you would call this. Is it wood? Is it resin? I'm not really sure, but it's hefty and it will definitely stand the test of time. I tend to not get decor that is ceramic or glass just because I do have cats. I say typically, I, do, I did get some obviously glass items, but um, if I do, I definitely sticky tack them to the surface that I'm putting them on so the cats don't get to it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so these were assorted prices. This one was $5.99, this one was $7.99, and this one was $12.99. They had more of these in a variety of shapes, sizes, and prices. These ones were, were cheaper, but they did have more like this as well, if that's something that strikes your fancy. This is like the one, I would say, more whimsical item that I got. Just a pumpkin that says spooky. I thought this was cute. I don't know where I'm gonna put this yet, uh, either in my office or maybe like in the kitchen or something like that. I just think it's cute, and this is glass, so I do need to kind of be careful, or ceramic, I guess. This pumpkin that lights up, I don't even really care about the light up feature, to be frank, but it's got these little bats on it, and I think the bats are what lights up specifically. So it's got trees, I don't know, graveyard scenes. I just thought it was cute. I will probably pair this. I have another like pumpkin jack-o'-lantern. I'll probably pair these two together somewhere in my house. Oh, and this was $19.99. And then this little witch's hat was $3.99. And she's just, she's cute. I like her. They did have a really large witch's hat. I want to say it was like yay big with a stack of books under it, like resin or whatever. I almost got that, but it was like $40 and I couldn't really justify it. So if it goes on sale, I will be getting that. They had so much stuff that I really liked, especially when it came to lawn decor. If you're someone who likes to decorate your front lawn, would recommend at home for that. They didn't have all of their decor out and there were already like four or five full aisles of stuff. One aisle devoted to like stakes that you can put in your lawn and like other fun outdoor decor. I'm holding off on that stuff because I can't remember exactly what I have from last year. It's a couple of like metal stakes that have like, I don't know, pumpkins or, you know, black cats on them, but I do want to expand my collection. So I will probably be buying more stuff later. But anyway, that is that is my haul. <laughs> that is what I got from at home and from Marshalls. Oh, I did get, which is not as exciting, maybe, fall leaf decor. This was $8.99 for a six foot like leafy garland. I got two of these and I will be putting them on my bookshelves in my office, which I'm really excited about. I haven't really like gone all out decorating my background before. And whenever I watch Lexi from Alexandra Roseland's channel, the fall time, she does it. She has the most aesthetic videos ever. Love her. I'll, I'll leave a link to her channel in, in the description, but she really inspires me to go all out with the Halloween and just like all vibes. So anyway, I got those two garlands. I'll be decorating my office at some point. Maybe that's what I got. <laughs> now I get to go and read though. Um, and you know what? I'll be honest with you. I don't know how much I'm going to be reading for this video today simply because I uh, have to finish a book for a KU video. Feeling a little bit behind. I was so excited going into this month because I was like, you know what? A lot of the videos I have are like sit downs. I don't need to do a lot of reading in advance. It'll be fine. Uh, and then I got sick. And so now I'm just a touch 
behind schedule. Not so much that I can't come back from it, but I'm like having to grind a little bit. And so the weekly reading vlogs might not be so reading heavy, but you know what? It's fine. Share my life, having a good time. I am finishing Blindside by Candy Steiner today for that KU video. And then I, I honestly will probably listen to part of an audiobook for something and I'll check in with you tomorrow probably with my thoughts and feelings on whatever I've started. In the meantime, I think I'm going to insert some, <laughs> I guess you could say fun b-roll footage of me and Hayden trying the crumble cookie flavors from not this past week but the week before before I got sick because I personally found it quite entertaining and I don't have any other video to put it into. It was for a weekly reading vlog that just never got posted so I'll throw that in here. Hopefully it will make you laugh and I'll see you tomorrow for some uh, actual reading content. This week the cookies sound interesting. A selection of four. There's obviously more than four cookies but we got four. We got the shark cookie, a macadamia nut cookie, sea salt toffee chocolate chip cookie, the coconut cake cookie. I coconut think. cake yeah. Yeah so we're gonna taste these and let you know how they are. It smells like dough. Yeah, that's why I don't really like their sugar cookies. They kind of smell and taste like Play-Doh to me. And he would be correct. I won't make you taste this one. Thank you. It's I'm magnanimous. Like, I don't, it doesn't taste any different, right? Somehow worse than usual. Macadamia chocolate white. <clears throat> Oddly greasy, but delicious. This one is a little underdone, but the flavor is good. I've never had a white chocolate macadamia cookie. Mm -hmm. such big chunks of macadamia. I kind of like it. They were not fucking around. I, I don't know if you're like a, I don't think you're a nut in your cookie kind of gal. My hands are sopping. Yeah, they look like I just oiled up Arnold Schwarzenegger before like one of his muscle competitions, you know? <laughs> okay, this one looks like the best of the cookies. Oh yeah, this one's I'm definitely looking forward to the most, which makes me sad that you also are. We do, we can get more. We already have four cookies, we're not gonna get more. Or do you just mean like if this one's really good, we can come back another day and get another one? Yeah. Is it really good? No. You don't like it? I'm not bad, it's that's, just like, it's kind of what, it's just sort of whatever. Mm. Mm. I think you missed the toffee part. Yeah, I just got like a tiny, tiny bit. I, I think I think you need to, to hit the toffee because it's like, it's giving like brown butter deliciousness. It's good. It's like a little toasty and salty. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little savory with the chocolate chip. Big fan of that. You already know I like the chocolate chip biscuit, so. Now I'm not, this thing is dead. It feels like a cake. This one is huge. Um, this is the coconut cake. I am just a little confused confused as to the uh, rainbow sour strip on top. Well, Don't worry about it. <laughs> you weren't even gonna let me lady in the tramp it? Tastes like sun cream, suntan lotion. I agree, but I wish you didn't say that. It's a warm cookie. It's warm when they put the icing on it. It actually does Let's have- Let's do that over the box. It actually does have the texture of sunscreen, sunscreen. as well. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot for that. Hey, it's like summertime goodness. It's pretty good though. Shark is taking me on a ride. Oh, did you just eat one of the gummy sharks off of the sugar cookie? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a gummy shark before? It tastes like what I imagine men's shaving cream to taste like. Essence of Barbasol. Now this is more Gillette, I would say. It's interesting that you say that because they actually did get the formula for the scent of Barbasol from sharks, so. Mm. There you go. A second bite of this actually kind of really hit. I had a second bite. My throat feels like it's burning. That's it's just like, the fun, you know? It's like way too much sugar and like UV blocking. That's probably why I'm good. I'm like used to the sunscreen, you know? It kind of feels like I actually ate sunscreen. Happy Tuesday. I'm not here with a reading update. I'm actually here to take you along with my little itch to switch. If you are unfamiliar with the phrase, it refers to when you were just dying to switch things up when it comes to your home decor. And I think buying new fall stuff yesterday definitely got my gears turning with some of the stuff that I have in my home and like what I want to start switching out. I was going to just do it all and show you after, but I think it would be more fun to take you along this process with me. Sorry this vlog is going to be literally so long with very little reading, although I have figured out what I'm going to read, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. But but I was just about to switch out a couple of floral arrangements in my home and I will actually show you that process because I think it's fun. Maybe you don't think it's fun. I don't know. I'm going to take you with me. So first thing that I did was I have a mirror. I had a mirror above the entryway little like shoe cabinet that I have that we recently installed. I did like a whole little DIY project. I'll insert a picture here of what the original looked like and I really, really liked this DIY. I thought it looked really fresh and modern and fun. And as much as I like what this currently looks like, I am putting a gallery wall very close 
to this. It doesn't match the vibes, right? My entryway, my living room, and my kitchen, like they're all one space. And so the theme or the furnishings, like they need to be fairly cohesive. Doing a gallery wall with a bunch of vintage gold frames, all black and white pictures, it's going to look very antiquated for lack of a better word. And I just feel like the current circular mirror over this modern Ikea like shoe cabinet, it's just not going to mesh well together. And I had, I guess I still have a mirror uh, that was above my dresser and it, I think, toes the line well between modern and antique. So I'm moving that mirror into the living room, which was like the whole itch to switch idea in the first place. And then I ended up moving a replacement mirror in here temporarily. Uh, I do hope to get some vintage artwork to put above my dresser. I'll show you what it looks like right now. Um, but currently I have this mirror that we used uh, for our wedding. I think one day I would like to put this in our like half bath downstairs as like a vanity mirror. I think it'd be really pretty, but for now I'm just gonna leave it here. I just don't like a big blank empty space, but that was the initial switch. And I'll go ahead and show you, or I'll take you into my living room into selfie mode. Oh, this is the mirror that I ended up replacing. As you can see, it's like kind of modern, but it also has, you know, a wood finish. It's a little bit more antique as opposed to the mirror that I have down here, the circular one. This is like a lighter wood. It just reads a little bit more modern. And this one, I think, just goes better with the vibe. The gallery wall is going to go right here. So and now I need to figure out how to furnish the top of this piece of furniture. I had a couple of things on it before and I don't think they're going to go well for like fall and also I don't think they're going to go well with this mirror. So I need to figure out like a floral arrangement for in here. Also again since like the living room and the kitchen are all intertwined I also want to figure out what to put accessory wise on this piece of furniture, on this piece of furniture, on my kitchen table, on my counters. Like it's a whole thing and everything has to coordinate but you don't want too many floral arrangements but you don't want too many any tabletop items. This is like a temporary thing that I have going on. I just threw some pumpkins right there, but I don't think they're staying. My new throw pillow that has uh, been toppled over by the dogs. Hopefully you kind of get an idea of what we're working with. Now I'm going to take you into one of my accessory closets. We have two pantries down here. One is right here and then one is behind me. It's like under the stairs. In there we keep like batteries, cat food, dog food, that sort of thing, but also all of my assorted goodies. I really like home decor. I like switching things up. I like to consider myself a fairly creative person, so having my home decor be the same for years uh, irritates me, but I don't want to spend a lot of money, so I like to keep you no know, cheap floral stems from craft stores and stuff and like switch those out or switch out the vessel that things go in, and so I have a small collection that I like to pull from. <laughs> so I'm going to show you my collection and uh, you can help me, I guess, select what I'm going to be putting in various spaces down here. Okay, so up here, as you can see, I've got some candlesticks, I've got some like pillar candles, I've got some floral stems and arrangements that I have both purchased and also like made myself. And then I also have a storage tote. Mm, shameful. Full of floral stems. Hayden, at his request, I put them in a container because he was irritated that they were just like out on a shelf. But here are the stems that I have collected so far. This was like $5, I think, at Target. Yeah, threshold. Like you can get this stuff, you can put it out, you get bored, put it away. Oh, take it out a month later, it's new again. So I'm gonna be using this bin of tricks plus some of the new Halloween and fall decor <laughs> that I got to dress up the rest of my space or I guess all of the space, uh, which I also think will be good because I kind of need a bit of a refresh in here. It's a little dirty. I still have like a handbag on my kitchen table because I never clean things up. So come along with me on this journey, on this ride. Let's get to doing things together. Thank you. 
Hello my friends, happy Thursday. It has been a second since I last spoke to you. I tried to film this clip yesterday and I realized I didn't talk about books at all and I was just rambling about my plans for next year. I'm gonna keep those to myself for a little while. Instead, I am gonna tell you about the book that I just started and also about the things that I just got from Home Goods. I found some good stuff. I forgot that I had a Home Goods near me. I saw on TikTok someone talking about like cute home decor at Home Goods. So I did get some stuff and I feel like I'm finally done. I say finally, I feel like I am just done period <laughs> with uh, shopping for like fall and Halloween decor because I really do have everything Thing that I need and a lot of stuff I don't need probably as well. So I'll show you that. And I also got into this here package the prints for my gallery wall that's going to go right behind us. I'm so excited and I thought I would show you them. Let me do that first actually because uh, I, I'm desperate to see what these look like. I've purchased from the stack house before. I got like a few initial prints from them for my gallery wall. I have like I think five or six frames and initially I only bought four pieces of I was gonna say art, four pictures basically uh, to be in those frames and I was like you know what I'm just gonna bite the bullet, pay more money and just get the rest of them because I just want to complete the gallery wall. I'll at once. I say that I hope to eventually take the gallery wall up really high. As you can see, like this wall is absolutely enormous and I would love to be able to take pictures all the way up <laughs> under those windows. I think it'd look really cool, kind of uh, maximalist. I think ultimately pretty fun. So I'm always on the lookout, I guess, for vintage frames at this point so I can do that and accomplish my goals. But I'm not in any super big rush simply because I didn't really have as many pictures to get printed as I thought that I had. And by that, I mean, I envision this wall being a bunch of family pictures, but I don't don't really have very many family pictures and you know I don't think that you are not a family if you don't have kids but I envision having like pictures of my family growing throughout the years on this wall and um, I don't have a, a family yet so <laughs> the only pictures I have really are from the wedding and I think this one right here is actually a picture of the cats that's the cutest thing I've ever seen I have a picture of my in-laws or like Hayden's side of the family I suppose I actually already got this printed before but I got it printed too small it's like oh I could try to like do a mat on the frame it didn't work so I just ended up printing this in a larger size and then and this last one is a very like tall skinny one and I thought I'd show you like what these end up looking like when you put them in a frame. All of the vintage frames that I find typically don't have backs on them which is you know frustrating but not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> so that's why I get everything printed on the photo rag paper on poster board or I don't know foam board. Basically set the picture in the frame and then tape up the back with like masking tape or craft tape and then it looks like this. I mean, I feel like that looks pretty awesome. I'm really excited to get the rest of these framed and put them on the wall back there. I'm actually, spoiler alert, kind of, I am going to be going to Fredericksburg tomorrow by myself because I don't have work. I took the day off and uh, I'm gonna go and shop around for some vintage art, vintage frames, just have myself a little, I'm, I'm better kind of day. Like I'm not sick anymore. I wanna go have an adventure. Hayden does not wanna come with me, which is fine. <laughs> he does not like antiquing nearly as much as I do, but uh, that's something I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I don't know if I'll like film any of that, but I definitely will give you a haul if that happens. I feel like these vlogs are basically just like me buying things and showing them to you, but capitalism has been popping off recently. I'm going to quickly show you the Halloween decor that I got from Home Goods. I like how I said that I'm not like super into the cutesy Halloween decor, but they really fucking got me, okay? They got me hook, line, and sinker. I'll show you this over music and then I'll talk to you about the book that I'm reading. Okay, so the book that I'm starting today is actually a thriller. I've kind of been in a weird reading mood. I have like 10 plus books on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads. I'm just trying to find something that like holds my attention and romance is actually not doing that at the moment. So I'm hoping for this vlog to just like read thrillers or whatever really strikes my fancy. I pulled two thrillers and the one that I have started on is You're Invited, which was a book of the month selection, I wanna say for last month, for the month of July. And uh, this one sounds really interesting and the writing already I'm really enjoying. It is about our main character, Amaya, who is in invited to her like ex-best friend's wedding and her ex-best friend is actually marrying her ex-boyfriend um, and in the synopsis of the book it says actually Kavi I want to say her name is Kavi the ex-best friend actually ends up going missing and is presumed dead before the wedding so I'm wondering if Amaya has something to do with it because in the first couple of pages of the book we already have her saying that she's like picking blood out of her fingernails and she's wondering if everybody's going to just like go ahead and enjoy the wedding that they're all at or like resort I guess that everybody is at despite the fact that the 
wedding is not actually going to happen. And again, I'm curious to know if she has anything to do with the disappearance of her ex-best friend or if she is going to be the one like unraveling what's happening. I never know how much to actually share when I read thrillers because I don't want to like spoil the book if I feel like it's good, but I also need to like talk about the plot and what's happening. So I will update you as I read this one. I think I'm going to try to like sit down on my couch, get comfortable and like really hop into this book because I feel like I'm not giving myself enough grace. No, not enough grace, enough patience, I guess you could say. I'll like sit down, try to listen to an audio, tune out because I'm on Instagram and then I'm like, oh, I don't need to read. But the thing is I do need to read actually. I have another video that I'm working on right now um, that I have sponsorship for, which is really exciting. And I need to get that done before Monday so the video can be like processed or like approved before Thursday. So um, much to think about, much to consider, much to do, but I am interested in this book. And I also have another one. It is, a, I think it's a book of the month pick as well. This is one that I got like through a book of the month partnership, I guess. The other one I just, I mean, I had book of the month and I got that selection, I think last year. So I don't know, I have two thrillers. I also am considering picking up The Bodyguard because someone actually commented on a video recently saying that they really ended up liking that book. And it's one of my most anticipated of the year. So if I'm in more of a romance mood, I might pick it up. And I think that one has like more of a plot line than some other romances. I feel like it kind of is leaning women's fiction from what I've heard, which uh, I normally don't like, but sometimes I'm just like not really in a romance mood sometimes. I know, shocking. So um, anyway, I'm going to read this. I will keep you posted on it as the day goes on. And uh, maybe I'll update you on the other books that I'm reading for that other video. Happy Friday. I am about to head to Fredericksburg, but before I do that, I thought that I would update you on the books that I have read and am reading. I am like 100-ish pages into You're Invited, and it's good. I'm enjoying it. It is a little bit worrisome, I guess, though. I'm, I'm kind of worried that our heroine is going to fall into the trope of, like, unhinged woman, and I say that, like, I feel like some of my most favorite mystery thrillers have this trope, and I feel like it's done well, um, and I don't think that mental health is necessarily the worst thing to include in a mystery thriller because let's think about it this way, right? Most people that murder people do have some sort of mental health um, issues. That's not to say that everyone that has mental health issues, like myself, would do anything quite so unhinged, but I don't think it's necessarily bad to have characters who have mental health issues in a thriller. Does that make sense? Um, I don't like when it is a cheap a cheap plot twist, but it doesn't feel like that's going to be done here. But I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit like wary about it. So we have our heroine Amaya and at the start of the story, we find out some interesting stuff about her. First, she's kind of a bitch, <laughs> which we love. Second, she has a sort of like dom sub relationship with a man that she like really doesn't know. At the very beginning of the story, uh, after we get sort of like the flashback into, you know, what just happened. We have her in the present day, like going to a hotel room to like meet this guy. And we're like, okay. So she has an interesting past or an interesting history and like, what is, what's gonna happen here? And then we start getting uh, interviews from like a private investigator, I guess, since like Avi Kavi has gone missing. I guess her family like hired someone and uh, there have been interviews between uh, the, the private investigator and different people in Amaya's life. We have like the ex-boyfriend slash future husband. We have, the maid that Maya grew up with. We have a bunch of different people and things are kind of unraveling and unfolding before us. And I'm like, I'm pretty into it, honestly. I'm curious to see where things go, like I said, because I'm, I'm not sure if the mental health is going to be something that is a, a choice, like a poor choice, or if it's something that's going to be like, oh my God, good for her. I don't know. I'm not really sure yet. I mean, if she like kills a fellow woman, is that good for her moment? I mean, the bitch did steal her ex-boyfriend. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. A book that I actually completely finished and I just wanted to briefly talk about here because I don't know where else I would really talk about this book except for maybe in my wrap up. I listened to in its entirety in like a day or two. I said, I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. I listened to the audiobook. I got it from Libro and wow, this was extremely powerful. I'm not really a nonfiction person. I'm not really a memoir person typically, and I definitely don't rate these sorts of books. So if you're looking for like a star rating for me, you're probably not going to get that. I was surprised at how much of this really affected me. Really like reading about mother-daughter relationships. This one was obviously hard to read about. I mean, like if you've if you've read or listened to any interviews between Jeanette and like whoever she's talking to about this book, you know, she she definitely lets you know kind of what the theme of the the memoir is going to be. And I think what I liked so much about it was the fact that she really didn't pull any punches. She really laid everything out before us as readers and also didn't necessarily tell us how to feel about them. And I was actually kind of surprised at that and a little bit annoyed maybe 
creepy at the beginning because I was like, wow, you're just like telling us all the stuff that's happening to you. But like, how are you feeling about it? Um, and there are obviously like moments of her saying like, I was jealous of this girl or whatever. I, I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of emphasis on how these things made her feel. And at first I was like, well, but like, that's the whole point of a memoir. Like, I want more of that. But as I kept reading, I was like, I like that you get to experience things how Jeanette was experiencing things. You get to make your own conclusions and own decisions um, about what's happening to her, I guess. Not about what's happening to her, but like, I liked that it didn't feel prescriptive or self-helpy. It was just very much like, this is my experience and this is what happened to me and take from it what you will. And I, I appreciated that. I did really love how this book ended as well. I don't want to like spoil it for you. Not that like someone's life experiences necessarily can be spoiled, but I think it had such a hard impact on me. Like I was genuinely really impressed with um, the conclusions, I guess, that Jeanette did come to and the conclusion that she shared with us at the end. It felt really, like I said, impactful because throughout the story, you're not getting a lot of like moments of real self-reflection I would say until the very end where she's like this is it and I was like okay yeah that's <laughs> that's really something I wanted to mention it here because it really had an impact on me I genuinely not to like be cheesy or dramatic wanted to throw my scale away after um listening to this audiobook and I think I will actually today I'm gonna do it fuck it I don't have the same uh struggles that Jeanette has but just seeing how much it affected her life and like how from such a young age she had these body dysmorphic and um, eating disordered behaviors. I was just like, wow, that's so sad to me that she, she you know, she was forced into things she didn't want to, to do and also that she couldn't enjoy her life for so long. And I'm like, why would I spend a minute of my time worrying about how big I am or what I look like. Like, I don't know. That, that was part of the takeaway that I got from this book. So um, I would say this book is definitely triggering or could be triggering if you have any sort of like disordered eating behaviors. So maybe don't pick this up if you're someone who is like, you know, sensitive to those topics or, you know, uh, topics of um, familial abuse, but it was really powerful and I am really glad that this book exists. So I would recommend it. I also would recommend the audiobook because Jeanette narrates it herself, so that was really nice to listen to. All that to say, it did put me in a bit of a weird mood, and then I decided to read a thriller that was also putting me in a weird mood, so I might pick up an audiobook on my way to Fredericksburg and listen to something like maybe romance-y or like more lighthearted. I don't know. That's where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and head to Fredericksburg. I probably won't film any of it because honestly, I'm just so looking forward to spending time with myself. I, I almost backed out of this like little trip because I was like, you know what? I don't I have to park my own car, which I know sounds like silly when you're in an unfamiliar place by yourself like having to find places to park and especially when like parking's shitty is that is that stupid i don't know that was like something that was kind of standing in my way of like going on this trip but i was like you know what you need to go you need to have a good time you need to relax and just like smell old books and touch old paintings and just relax yeah and i was also like well i have so much to read for other videos no go enjoy myself i will come back and do all the shit i need to do later but for a few hours i'm just going to have a good time. And if I get anything good, obviously I'll haul it for you, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and go head out uh, and have, have a time. All right, this lighting is absolutely terrible, but we're working with it because this is the only time that I felt like pulling out my camera over the past couple of days. I am sad that this vlog has like turned out this way. And by that, I mean, I am sad that my mood has not been better. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I I had a good time on my shopping adventure excursion, whatever. Uh, but then I came home and Hayden helped me hang the gallery wall on Saturday and part of this morning and Sunday. But I just have been in such a funk. I think it's the weather. It has been so cloudy for the past few days and it's just not raining. And I don't know. I just have a lot on my mind, a lot that is weighing on me. We'll say, gotta be, oh, you didn't expect me to be 
I didn't expect you to quick. come back that quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about my poor mental health. I was just gonna say, that's one of my favorite things about this place is like how You're insanely in quick it is. What did they call it? Freaky fast? I got myself a sandwich. Well, Hayden got me a sandwich. Um, yeah, and it, I was in there like for the king that like he is. 30 seconds. Like as long as it took me to tell them what I wanted and put my card in the thing, the sandwich was done already. Yeah, so I just haven't been in a great mood. So I haven't really uh, wanted to film, but I have gotten a little bit of the ways into a book that I guess I could talk to you about. Although I did remember that I've said a couple of times that I was going to Fredericksburg and I don't think I ever said what Fredericksburg is. I guess I just assume that everybody knows what, what Texas is and, and where places are in Texas. <laughs> Fredericksburg is a small German town, I guess, in the Texas Hill Country. Mostly wineries and stuff out there and then some like antiques and shit. It's a very big like touristy place. And a lot of, I would say, gals go on their bachelorette trips there, but it's not super far from where we're at, so I sometimes will go there, and sometimes I make Hayden go with me. Anyway, I went by myself, and I got myself some good antiques, and I'll show you those in the next reading vlog that I do. I say reading vlog. I'm retitling these weekly vlogs, because let's be honest, not a whole lot of reading is getting done. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I went to Fredericksburg. It was a good time. I just, I feel like I'm in sort of a, well, uh, annoying lighting situation, uh, but I'm in a weird mood, and so I didn't want to, like, view non-reading updates. I haven't even been reading for the vlog that I am, like, legally obligated to finish tomorrow. Tomorrow, so legally not legally but i have laws <laughs> i have a sponsorship that i need to turn in tomorrow i still have to read like three books for someone riding a leaf blower i'm not having it today don't kiss the bride is the book that i've been reading i picked this one up on the recommendation of my girl crystal crystal i love you so much like for the record you're the best i'm enjoying this book it's cute it's about a guy who i guess we're calling lucky and some girl who i don't remember the name of and she is in high school her mom's a hoarder she kind of has a rough life and i think that she's gonna maybe marry this guy for what reason i don't know um but i'm assuming based on the title um that's that is going to be the case here and i swear to god these clouds are really fucking me down the book is good so far it's cute i have started this book a couple of times in the past and i haven't gotten as far as i have now which is still admittedly not that far i think i'm like 10 percent in i can check my old hoopla six percent in which again not very far um but it's cute i'm liking it and i will probably tell you my final thoughts on it again in next week's vlog because i'll be reading it then along with the thriller what is it you're invited that i also didn't finish in this vlog so you know what a time to be alive i hope you enjoyed all of the day core hauls that i did because that's all this video was uh i'm hayden <laughs> i started reading witcher oh yeah okay i guess you know what this is hayden's weekly reading vlog hayden yeah. tell us about the witcher i've been enjoying it a lot so far i think you said that you had started reading it at one point and like just like didn't really enjoy it that much that's fine personally i don't i'm not a short story girl so i've very much enjoyed the short story aspect. I really like the storytelling and specifically this is going to sound really weird but I like that a lot of the stories so far have obviously it's a short story right so there's a lot of like exposition that needs to be given about the situation that the witcher is currently in in whatever you know given town that he enters like the, the townspeople need to give exposition on like the problem that needs to be solved and i like the character storytelling if that makes sense sure obviously i like a good story and i like good storytelling and it's kind of even more fun when like character tells a story on their own like with their own kind of like spin mm -hmm. on how things are going right so it's like every story that you're told by different townspeople or whoever the witcher happens to be encountering that's like telling them the problem it ends up being a little bit different from the last in the way that they tell it because it's being told by a different person from a different perspective so i don't know it's kind of fun i like it a lot let me know in the comments if you would like more book reviews by hayden because he seems to know what the fuck he's talking about but i'm clearly at a loss for words talking about my stupid ass book so <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying your book. Maybe I'll start my own YouTube channel. Maybe you should. Honestly, I, I between you and Spencer, I really feel like y'all would have very successful booktube channels. And yet I'm the one making the videos. I like here's my thing. I wouldn't mind making like my own videos, right? Where like I get to read things that I want to read and then I get to say like what I want to say yeah. about them, yeah. right? I don't think that I read enough books. You don't have to read that many. You know what I mean? I don't think I would put out enough videos 
Okay. You can just co-opt mine. You can rent space on my channel. Just, like, Hayden's reading corner. Like, whenever <laughs> I... Hayden's nook. Just, like, whenever I finish a book, I'll just, like, make a video. I'll read and film at my own pace. Okay. And then I'll edit it myself, too, so you don't have to do that part. I like the editing. But... Oh, okay. Well, you can edit it for me if you really want to. You yeah, can make it fun and zesty. I, I like making it fun and zesty. And then, like, it'll just be, like, a random Hayden book review every once in a while on like a genre that none of your readers care about some i would say there's a good portion of my readership or viewership that reads fantasy well yeah okay so like there are some exceptions to that right like there are the occasional book that i read that i think would overlap with some of the viewership but there are also books like like the metro series that i just read that i, I can guarantee I still think people would be interested in it i think that there's probably a lot of your readers that have never heard of metro oh are you so underground no i'm not at so all cool? let me know if you read the metro series who's the author i think it's Daniel Glukowski, I think is his name. Maybe his first name isn't Daniel. It's definitely Glukowski. I thought it was though. Dimitri. Maybe it is Dimitri Glukowski. That, I don't actually I mean, know. That I could sounds, make it shit up. No, that sounds more correct because he is Russian. Actually, you know what? This put me in a better mood. I think the lesson is Hayden needs his own spot. And maybe that'll just be in my vlogs for now. Do more of these check-ins. I always promise things. I am normally reading something on my own. That is own, true. So, that like, is you true. You can just ask me for updates. I'll just you know? ask you for updates. I know I said that he would cook for us uh, this week. I mean, frankly, he didn't really cook for us this week, so there wasn't really much to film. It, that is false. I did cook for you on a live all right, so... Is that this week? Yeah. This has been the longest week of my fucking life. It was at the very beginning it of the week, Monday. to be fair. It was on Monday. Yeah, that's yeah. true. We'll probably do that again tomorrow. Did, I'm pretty sure that I cooked for you more than just Monday, you though, did. as well. We also made us fish, but we've already seen the fish. Everybody's already seen the fish. No one wants to see the fish again. I mean, we like the fish. No one wants to see the fish. All right. Fine, I guess I'll have to find something new and exciting. <laughs> new and exciting to cook. On that note, I really just want to eat my turkey sandwich as Hayden drives to whatever place he's getting food. A little bit of road turkey for you. I'll see y'all Thursday, I think. And then you'll see another one of these the week after. So thanks so much for watching. Love you so much. And until next time.